Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. We're going to be together forever. Welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Zombie Flesh Eaters 3. This is disc number 47 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. The blurb on their website says, In 1979, director Lucio Fulci created a video nasty legend with his masterpiece, Zombie Flesh Eaters. A sequel was born in 1988, for which Fulci returned. But the best was yet to come, with 1989's outrageously gory and ghastly Zombie Flesh Eaters 3. Directed by Claudio Fragrasso, the man behind the notorious Troll 2 and the producer of the infamous and formerly banned splatter opus Zombie Creeping Flesh, the innards and excitement comes thick and fast in this first class follow-up, which returns its witless characters to the Caribbean and a voodoo legend that unleashes hordes of shambling corpses seeking to chow down on anyone stupid enough to be trespassing on hollowed ground. Years since it scandalised audiences, 
The third in the Zombie Flesh Eaters franchise is back to bite its way to you in your Blu-ray collection. The special features on the disc are a brand new 2K scan of the original film materials, a high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, uncompressed original English audio, optional English SDH subtitles, Run Zombie Run, interview with director Claudio Fergrasso and screenwriter Rosella Drudy. Flesh Eaters, Driller Killers and All Round Video Nasties, an interview with Alan Bryce. The trailer and reversible sleeve with alternate poster design. The technical specs are, this is region unlocked everywhere, A, B and C. Woo! The audio is LPCM stereo, picture is 1080p HD 1781. The runtime is approximately an hour and 20 odd minutes. And uh, English language and English subtitles, weird one of these little kind of just all English why not we're not we're not even pretending anymore uh, we're just doing everything in English and overdubbing in English so this is a first time watch for me I had never seen Zombie Flesh Eaters 3 before I am very much aware of its reputation primarily because this is a movie that takes it back to the island where the first one's set now anyone that's been listening to podcasts under the stairs for long enough will know that it, it took me a long time to kind of enjoy zombie flesh eaters I was always kind of of the opinion that it was an okay movie and some people genuinely seem to spunk their load over it which is fine but to me it was always that kind of ah it's alright but it's nowhere near the master class of Filch's work you know in the in the, the movie after City of the Living Dead or even the beyond which I mean on any given day I'll say the beyond is his best movie along beside something like Don't Torture a Duckling that I was always kind of lukewarm on it. Interestingly enough, when me and Andy did the doing the nasty series on the the section one movies from the DPP list, I kind of warmed up to it in, in quite a strong way. I actually found a brand new appreciation and love for it, primarily through the Arrow video restoration, which I think is the tits. Um, and I've watched a couple of times since then, and to be honest, it's a movie that I am now, you know, I'm now 100% on board with it. It just took me a long time to get on board with it. I, I don't know why I was so reluctant. And having seen the second movie and kind of realising the second one's kind of hokey and kind of bonkers, I did not have any kind of real high expectation for Zombie Flesh Eaters 3. I mean, you attach the name Claudio Fragrazzo. You, when you've seen Troll 2, you kind of know what you're going to get with this guy. Also with the fact that, like I say, I knew it was going back to the island, what I felt we were going to get is a highly derivative piece of, of kind of shock gore horror. And to be honest, it kind of is, but at the same time, that benefits this movie greatly. Because what this movie does really, really, really well is its effects. This one is all about the gore, like 100% about the gore. And I will be honest with you, and you might roll your eyes at this, some of my favourite kind of scenes of Italian zombie gore are in this movie now post seeing it. Some of the effects hold up really, really well on um, kind of a 1080p transfer and a blurry that the kind of two key scan shows actually the care and attention that went into some of these effects, which I think look fucking gnarly and brilliant. Italian zombies have always been my favourite. They always will be my favourite. There's just something about them that just... It kind of reminds me of like how I would expect zombies to look. No offense to Romero, you know Romero wrote the book, but in the case of this one, the the bodies do look like they're decaying, which and they're all bloated and horrible. And I like that aspect. I also like the fact that we're tying it back into kind of a kind of Haitian voodoo uh, as well, and uh, kind of grounding it in that the ceremony that brings them out and. That's one aspect of why this movie works. The second aspect to why I think this movie works surprisingly well is that it doesn't even try and be a horror movie at any point. This is an action movie. Now, you may want to argue with me, but I'm telling you now you're wrong. This is a a splatter action movie, kind of basically at its core. Yes, it's dealing with things that are supernatural, so thus we are putting it in a horror category, but Fergrasso shoots this one like Predator. The music, the musical kicks, the music by the way, the score in this is fucking amazing, um, is 80s-tastic, 
But this is like this at times. This is shot like Predator, and the and the jungle as are walking around with the musical kicks kicking in when they should. But this time, instead of having you know a, an alien with a, a fucking cannon mounted on its shoulder taking you down, you've got zombies doing it. And I love the fact that we, we stick to the traditional nature of these zombies will walk. What what we do quite well in this one, I think, as well, is we we start adding to the mythology what these zombies can do. So one of the characters who is like a kind of soldiery guy, when he turns, he's still holding the gun, so he knows how to fire a gun, um, thus killing one of the characters. And I kind of, I want to think as a nod to Night of the Living Dead. But it's really well done as well. It's cheesy as Get Out, but I think it works well in the confines of this movie. The actors are hamming it up to the, the greatest level that they could ever ham anything up. I mean, the smell of ham wafting off my TV screen made me hungry, made my mouth water. Um, it, you know, it's a, it's a cheesy, hammy movie, but, like I say, the effects are what sells it. We have tons of kill, tons of gore in this movie, and it understands that you need them thick and fast. There is very little downtime in this movie at all, and even the downtime you're getting are conversations with characters right before something gnarly is about to kick off again. And the movie knows how to pace that and it paces it very well. It structures it in such a way that there is, like, we've got an, what, just under an hour and a half of this movie here. And from the opening scene, we know what's going on, where we are, the zombies are there, someone dies, and then it's like, right, well, we are now trying to escape the inevitable. And this is a movie that very much, in the, the way that I love Italian zombie movies, are always, you're trying to escape the inevitable. It's, no matter how far you go, you know, these guys are gonna eventually get you, and if you are hoping for a happy ending, guess what, you're probably not gonna get it. And I love those aspects. I think that, you know, aids this movie really, really well. I mean, it doesn't have the the depth that a Filchy movie would have, and I know, once again, your eyes are probably rolling at the fact that I've used the word depth and Fulci in the same sentence. It doesn't have that depth. This is a very kind of superficial movie that is, is interestingly enough, a trying to emulate a lot of what's come before, but trying to put a fresh spin on it. But the fresh spin it puts in it makes it, if anything, feel more derivative than it actually is. But that seems to work with it. It, it just knows the zone that it's in, and it doesn't try and aim for anything loftier than what it's, what it's trying to do. And as a result, you get a remarkably consistent movie. Now, why is it remarkable? Well, if you look at a movie like Troll 2, Troll 2 is not a consistent movie. It's, and some sequences appears to be rather well put together, and then other sequences feels to be the worst constructed movie of all time. So I was quite surprised sitting down knowing that Fergrasso was behind this one and seeing a movie that is consistent from start to finish. Now, you could argue as the viewer, well, consistency is great, but if the consistent level is not great overall, then, you know, it's not a great movie. And you are right. You are right. And maybe my tempered expectation of expecting something lower of a lesser quality would affect this movie. But I'll be honest with you, all the way through it, I was kind of glued to my screen, loving every second of kind of viscera being flung across, you know, a room or being chowed down on, it made me smile. And the movie knows its audience that it's playing to. If you have picked up Zombie Flesh Eaters 3, chances are you've seen Zombie Flesh Eaters 2 or maybe even Zombie Flesh Eaters. So it knows its audience. Granted, it's less the horror aspect and more the munchy munchy action boom side of things, but it knows that as well. And as a result, I, I don't think it is doing anything out with what the director actually wants to put across here. You're getting a very, I think, authentic version of what a 1989 zombie kind of horror action movie should look like. It's surprisingly better than you would actually think. This one does not fall into traps of other movies about the same time. When you consider that 89 is the... We are, we are, we are like a spitting distance now from seeing the, the, the infrastructure of Italian cinema, but specifically horror cinema or genre cinema, about to get flushed down the toilet. The big names are kind of gone and Argento is off 
doing like American productions at this point. Fulci is very ill and has only got a couple of movies left. This is like what the year before Cat in the Brain. So, which you know, audiences struggled to watch at the time as well because it was fucking bonkers. Um, and so things are kind of things are on the out. And Zombie Flesh Eaters Three, for whatever reason, manages to maintain a consistency which I think it's commendable and worth mentioning how difficult it is to do that. I found this one hugely entertaining. I found the deaths brilliant. I love the ending. The ending is, you know, is a classic Italian zombie ending, if ever I saw one, with great effects. I mean, the effects in this one are the reason you want to sit down and watch this movie. It's not for the acting. The score is great. Some of the cinematography surprisingly well handled overall it's just a fun fucking movie I, I, i'm i'm surprised i'm saying this my grade for this movie is a 3.5 out of 5 and i think that if i watch this movie again it might move up to a 4 that's how confident i am i would totally watch this movie again this year and i'm surprised i genuinely thought this was going to be one of these well every now and again we get a blip in the italian collection and we all have to no not at all with this movie this movie landed spot on with me and made me smile from ear to ear. I had a conversation on Facebook with our, our buddy and listener, Jamie McCauley, who was basically saying, oh, it's a, a rough way to start the morning. And when I said that, actually, I was having a lot of fun with it, I think his comment back was he, he was convinced I was being sarcastic, and I genuinely wasn't. I was sitting downstairs, counting down the time that I was coming off my intermittent fasting so I could have my breakfast, watching a movie which you know, should have tried my patience, but just just made me hugely entertained by the whole situation. It's a great movie, yeah, 3.5 out of 5 for Zombie Flesh Years 3.